charge density is given and it varies and we want to know um, what distance from the z-axis half the total charge lies so there's the axis here and we want to know how far along this direction this p direction um, how far out in this direction is half of char our total charge so q total equals uh, q total let me write it like this I'm going to rewrite the problem. I think that's always something that's smart to do. So what P at Q total over 2? Let me zoom this in a little bit. So this problem does get a little crazy with all the uh, with all the integration in algebra. So let's get after it. So the first thing we want to notice is we're looking, first we're going to have to look for a charge, right? The charge is in units of Coulomb. And we have charge density, which is Coulombs per meters cubed. So what does that tell you? You need to find some sort of meters cubed value to multiply it. And they'll cancel and you'll get some charge value. So whenever you're dealing with meters cubed, you know you're looking for volume, right? And since we're using cylindrical coordinates, we're going to have something that looks like this. We're going to have the integral of this charge density right, times some volume. So now let's let's make that let's uh, describe that a little bit more. So we know we're dealing with cylindrical coordinates, and um, it's three dimensional, obviously, because it's a cylinder. So we'll have something that looks in the form of this. So you have your three integrals and what's uh, the dimensions of a cylinder you have rho or p I, sometimes i call it p on accident you have phi and you have z right so this is what our what it looked like originally and never forget that um whenever you're doing cylindrical coordinates this dv dv is always equal to rho d rho D phi, D C. Okay. So there we go. Oh wait, look at that. I freaking said not to forget it. And I forgot it anyway. So you have your row, D row, D P, D Z. So now we got to plug in our. We can plug in our row V value, which is up here, and we're gonna have to determine what our uh, limits of integration are for all these three. So let's let's do it. So rho v, what's rho v? It's um, p naught over, we'll call this rho prime, plus p squared, squared, and we have rho v, rho, d phi, d z. All right, so we know we're looking for p, right? So we have to keep that variable in our problem, essentially. So we're going to go from the start of this axis because we're going from the from the z-axis outwards, so we're going from there to p, and then um, the other two coordinates. If you look at the charge density, it's it's always important to like look at what variables are changing um, whenever you're given some sort of function. So the only real variable you have here is this rho, because your z your z is not involved in this equation, and your phi is not involved in this equation. So the only thing that's changing the charge density value is this is this uh, rho. So the z and the phi, you can just kind of give them um, numbers that work well, essentially. So with phi, we'll go fully around the circle, which will give us 0 to 2 pi. And z, we'll just choose, we'll go up to like, let's say this is 1. We'll choose the 1 just because it makes it easier. And it really doesn't affect our problem because again it's not a variable in this uh, function here 
And what does this even give us in the first place? So this gives us a Q value. This will give us a Q of P. Okay, so let's start. Let's start integrating this sucker. So um, we'll do this integral first. Zero to P over that. So U substitution give us U equals P times squared. Um, we'll give you the two P prime. I'll give you. So you got one over X. Let's skip. I'm skipping a little bit of steps here. Give you a whole bit. This will give you, um, we can put the P naught over there for now. This will give you, oh yeah, negative one half. Because this this is DU, you're going to need a two there. And a one half, and then there's going to be a negative, because when you have, you'll end up at one over U squared. And that'll, that'll go to negative one over U. And that one half is pulled out. So you'll end up with something like this. 1 over 2 p um, times k plus k squared plus 0 to p. This is the hardest integral. These other two are pretty easy, but I just want to keep it consistent. 1 half p naught and 1 over 2. Now this p will go in. So Oh wait, this this one over two. I already put that in there. Sorry. We'll just block it out. My eraser's a little too big. I don't feel like fixing it. So um, the reason I put that p prime there, by the way, is just, it's just like a kind of a not really a formality. It's like technically incorrect to have a p and integrate in terms of p. So yeah, you just put a prime there. But um, that'll give you p squared plus a squared. Minus one over uh, this one time it's going to be zero, so it'll be one over a squared. So these two integrals are really simple. You're just going to get a. This isn't really going to do anything because remember you don't have any. Um, you still have your d phi here, and your d z, but you don't have any. You don't have any variables that are affecting the d phi. Like, there's no phi here to, to even integrate over, so it's just like integrating a constant number. You're just going to get um, you're going to get phi, and that'll turn into two pi essentially. And then the same thing with this one, where this with the z and the one. So you're essentially just going to get negative one half p naught. This will turn into a one. This will turn into a two pi. And then you have this whole mess over here one over b squared plus a squared minus one over a squared okay so now we're done integrating right remember this is still q of p so i'm gonna change colors and get a little just getting tired of this color so these will two these twos will cancel um, now you'll have negative p naught 1 over p squared plus a squared minus 1 over a squared. Okay. Um, so what can we do now? We could pull out this a squared. That works, right? Make it a little bit nicer to look at. Oh wait, I forgot the pi. There you go. A squared. And this will be one over p squared over a squared plus one. Minus the nice thing about pulling out the a squared is you just have a one here. And it kind of helps you evaluate your problem. Um but yeah, I think we're pretty much done. Oh, I guess we can get rid of that negative outside. That's how the buff did it too, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to switch out this negative, switch these numbers around. So P naught pi over A squared equals 1 minus 1 over P squared over A squared plus 1. Okay, so now you have Q 
q as a function of p. All that work just to find q as a function of p. So what do we need now? We need, I'll change the color again. We need q total over two. Well, first we need q total to do that. So what is q total equal to? q total is going to be the charge, or the, the function, as p goes to infinity. Because if you look at this, if you look all the way at your function, um, we know it's dependent on, on p. So it's kind of like, and we it's actually inversely dependent. So what you'd notice when you look at this, your charge density is going to be like very dense over here in the, in the center. And as you grow into the p, as you grow in this direction, this p direction, or in this direction, the p direction, it gets a little more sparse. But to capture the total charge, you'd have to go all the way out to frickin' infinity. So that's what we're gonna do. So q total charge, q sub infinity. Okay. So q as we go to infinity, p naught p uh, squared one minus one over. What's this infinity gonna do? This will make uh, that number really large, right? Did I fuck that up? Oh no, 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 sorry. Yeah, this will be infinity. That'll be plus one, but it doesn't really matter. So this will turn to zero, right? Turn to zero. And this, this is effectively nothing. So we only have like this part of the and so q of infinity is p naught pi over a squared. Cool. So now I need to find, and this is equal to q total, like we were talking about before. So now we need to find um, q total over 2. So q total over 2 is p naught pi over 2a squared. So we finally have q, q total over 2. Now we need to find out um, what p is equal to at that level of charge. So now we plug in that original function up here, this guy. Um, p naught pi over a squared. 2a squared. Q, Q total over 2 is equal to this function. Alright. So, can cancel some shit out. This will cancel. Pi will cancel. That will cancel. That will cancel. A squared will cancel. Uh, that will cancel. So now you have one half equal to one minus one over p squared over a squared plus one. Plus one. Um, subtract the one. Negative one half equals negative one over p squared over a squared plus one. Those negatives cancel. And cross multiply or whatever, so it's like two equals p squared over a squared plus 1. That'll be, become a 1 equals p squared over a squared. The, almost finished here. So a squared equals p squared. And square root that. a equals p. Or p equals a, more importantly, because we're looking for p. We are looking for p. So that's our answer. And you don't have to worry about the positive negative because we're dealing with them. This, these are both values of distance. These are values of distance in meters, right? So our final answer would then be p at q total over 2 equals a. There you go. I, like I said, a lot of algebra. Not too hard once you... Um, once you get rolling with it, but I think the initial setup was a little bit confusing with this problem, so...
yeah there you have it peace